Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar from Brentwood, Essex, England. Funny old film bloke again. Welcome back to my channel and I'm another happy bunny again. A kind gent has given me some cameras. Wonderful, and look at this. It's a 1946 to 47 Leica 3C. Complete with metal lens cap with the word Leica on it and a genuine Leica UV filter. It's got the 50mm f2 Sumitar lens, so that um, is to be compared with the Sumar lens on my Leica Model 2 from 1934. And I've already done a video about that. But um, it, I cleaned it up. The viewfinder was all filthy dirty. He said he'd never used it. Now, the trouble with when you don't use things, they go wrong. And this one is no exception. It will need a service, unfortunately. The shutter is faulty. And the flash synchronization, which has been added to it, is faulty. And the rangefinder is faulty. But it was free. So we'll show you what happens with a Leica 3C. According to the number here, it's 1946 to 47. This one has fast speed up to a thousandth of a second on the top from the 30th. And then on the side here is another speed selector with some slower speeds. And what you have to do, you have to wind it on like the Russian cameras, you never set the shutter without winding it on. So that says 1 30th to 1 second. And if you want the slower speeds, you have to go down here and they're very small little numbers. You've got to press a button because they go on two different directions. So we'll see what we can get here. My eyes are getting bad. We'll see if we can get a, a tenth of a second. Yeah, it says a tenth. Now, sometimes the shutter goes at a tenth and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, that was, that was a slow speed. Now, that wasn't, you see. That was a fast speed. No, that's a fast speed. So that, is how the shut is faulty. See if we can turn it round here. It says um, half a second. There we are, it's on two, which means half a second. It's very small, you've got a good eyesight. No, that's nowhere near half a second. No, nope. it's about one hundredth of a second. So it's faulty. But I've been out, I've taken some pictures, and I will show you. So you, you select your speed here against the little black line. So if we want faster speed, I, I used a hundredth of a second because the light was abysmal. That sounded quite fast. Yes. So when you take a picture, you have to have this little lever in the A position, which is advance. And when you turn it to that way, you rewind your film here. Now, we'll have it on advance for the moment. We'll wind it on and we'll show you how to load the film because it's got this base loading system as on the old screw thread like. Look, there's a bit of worn paint there. That's got to be touched up. Yes, I'll touch that up with a bit of black paint. We take out the spool here. I've got a oh, dropped on the floor. Now, you have to put it in the correct way. You could have, it's got to go, having dropped it, it's got to go that way. So, you have to look for a little clip. Ah, here's a little clip. And you feed the emulsion side underneath the little clip here. Um, see, it's not, it's not easy. When your eyes are, eyes are getting a bit bad. There's a little arrow. It's got little, little dots on it. When you push it in long enough, you can see a shape of a little arrow appearing like that. So it goes in like that. Now, we, modern films have got the short leader, but Leica has to have a long leader cut like that. So 
if you don't want to cut it, you can do the old trick of a business card. Here's one of my business cards, Peter Elgar business card. We slip that down in there. Then we put the film around the back of the business card. I learnt this years ago, how to load, get around this business of having the... Look, pretend I'm in a war zone and I'm in a trench under fire. By now, I would have been well and truly shot, mate. The time it takes to load these old likers. So how these war photographers did it, I don't know. Right, there we are. You take out your business card, put on the thing of the correct way round. Yes, they've got a little little lug. Turn it, lock it, wind it, fire it off once. Yes. Now see if that take out the slack on the rewind. See if this is winding. Yes, the rewind knob is going now. You've got to remember to set it to number one. You turn that, that was a good guess, on the little arrow, it's already number one. Yes? So you can ta start taking your snaps now. There we are. And it's all working. Lovely jubbly. Now, how to use a rangefinder. This tiny little window, you put up to your eye and it's minute little rangefinder window the view comes in there and it goes through a beam splitter and comes out there and you can do a focus here for your eyesight with this little lever here you can make it go sharper inside the viewfinder according to your eyesight and then this is the actual viewfinder that you look through and you look through this little window here for that is it minute small little viewfinder so you turn your lens, you press, press this to unlock it, you turn that, you use the range finder until the images are coincident like that, and then you should be in focus. And then you take your snap. Now this is unfortunately not working correctly because you can't see much of the range finder, it's faulty. But here are the distances here, and it's in meters. So what I did, I had to guess against the little index here the distance I was going to take. So there's three meters, which is just over 10 feet. I took some at that and I took some a bit further away. Now, this lens is the collapsible version. You twist it and, and then you can push it in like that in, with a lens cap and your filter on. You can put it in your pocket and um, then when you come out you unscrew it you lock it like that if you don't lock it everything will be out of focus now here is how you set the apertures and this is against another minute little black dot there the Germans must have had good eyesight because everything's minute but this is extremely stiff it hasn't been used, you see. You must use cameras. Look, it's extremely stiff. The grease is so thick, it's difficult to turn. And as you turn it, you undo, undo the lens. <laughs> so, that, anyway, I managed it, and I took a few snaps. As I say, when you want to rewind your film, you put it that way, you rewind your film here until you can feel it going click and you take out your take out your cassette and here's your film ready for processing like that so um there we are mate let's see like a 3c obviously it's been added the flash synchronization that's what i forgot to tell you it doesn't work because there's a short circuit. What a shame. I, was, I wanted to take some flash pictures. It doesn't blast it work. It shorts. Wait till, it, wait till the little light comes up. It might fire. There. Ah. Now, 
Now, it, it hasn't fired, so, oh, there we are. It's firing, you see? The short circuit. I couldn't take any flash pictures. So we'll show you some snaps now. So it's no use waffling on about cameras if you don't see some results. So <coughs> I've printed out from scan negatives. Great expense on inks. But here's one I took of our wartime seat in the churchyard and the Dove of Peace. That was taken on, these were taken on a 40 ASA film. I thought I'd test it. This is our war memorial, which was, that was laid there on November the 11th. The names are good. And they, they were all taken at the F4, because the light was so poor, I couldn't stop down very much. And here's one taken to show if the lens is good, Although it's not coated, it's an uncoated lens. Does it flare? Well, it's into a bright sky, and look, I caught a bird. Look at that. Talk about Henri Cartier Bresson. The decisive moment, I caught a pigeon there, and a light, and a trail from a jet. But it, it hasn't flared. There's some detail in the lamp, and the contrast is still there. So when we do a darkroom print, That'd probably be good. So, this has got to go for a service. But in the meantime, that's about the Leica 3C from 1946 to 47. Keep watching, and if you want to contribute to my expenses, have a look at the link, buy me a coffee down below. Thanks for watching, folks.